Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and this short video, another video in our series of videos dealing with hypothesis testing, uh, and more importantly looking at a non-parametric test. Uh, the non-parametric test we're going to explore in this video is a chi-squared test of independence. Okay. Uh, and what I've done here is, is well, we want to conduct this chi-square test of independence in SPSS. But first of all, I just set up some fictitious data. Uh, I have two categorical variables. Uh, the first one is gender. There's two levels of measurements associated with gender. There's males and there's females. And the second categorical variable is salary band. And I've created three salary bands, 20,000 to 60,000 euros, 60,000 to 100,000 euros, and 140,000, sorry, 100,000 to 140,000. So these particular these particular individuals uh, work in a particular company. Uh, we have sixty males that are earning between twenty and sixty thousand. We have twenty eight males that are earning between sixty and hundred thousand, and we have seventeen males earning between a hundred and hundred forty thousand. So that's the distribution of the salary bands uh, associated with one hundred five males. And within this organization, there are 68 females. And those 68 of those 68 females, 45 earn between 20 and 60,000, 21 between 60 and 100,000, and two between 100 and 140,000. And I suppose the question that I'm really asking here is this, is that is a individual salary band independent of their gender and we'd like to be able to uh, we'd like to be able to assert with some degree of confidence if it is the case that these things are dependent on each other uh, and the way we're going to do that is with a hypothesis test but what I've set up over here is I've act excuse me I've set up the two variables. So zero here in this column represents males, and I've got 105 males, okay? So if I scroll down here, you can see that I have approximately, well not approximately, I have exactly um, 105 zeros representing the males. Uh, and I also have, in relation to the females, I have, well there you go, the countdown here is I have 68 females. And associated with each male, uh, I've created their salary band, I've associated their salary band, so I should have 60 zeros for the males. So down here I have 60 zeros representing the males. Let me just go down to 60. You can actually see here that this goes down to 60. I have 60 males that are earning between uh, 20 and 60,000 euros in this organization. And then I've listed the other categories associated with the males and then all the categories associated with the females. And this is important because within SPSS, we need to know uh, the, the measures uh, for each participant. This is participant one, it's a male, in salary band zero. So zero, it's a male earning between uh, 20 and 60,000. Uh, this particular participant, let's say here, uh, this participant labeled 90 is a male earning between, he's in the third salary band, so he's earning between 100 and 140,000 euros. So what I've done is I've taken this data here, okay? So I've taken this data out of, S out of Excel, I've copied it, uh, I've went into SPSS and what I did was I basically I basically uh, pasted that that particular data set into SPSS uh, this in the data view window okay I went into the variable view window and I defined my variables the first column represents gender the second column salary band uh, the gender variable has two levels of measurement you can see that that's listed in the values zero represents males one represents females it's a nominal variable there's no natural ordering associated with gender classifications in relation to the salary band you can see i've set up three categories zero one and two representing 20 to 60 60 to 100 and 100 to 140 thousand euros respectively and that's ordinal okay there is a natural order between salary bands uh, the 20 to 60 uh, thousand euros is less than the 60 to 100 thousand which is less than the 100 to 140,000 euros. But what I'm interested in is, is salary band independent of gender? Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a chi-squared test of independence. The null hypothesis is that the two variables and the levels of measurement associated with the two variables are independent of each other. In other words, there's no association between salary and gender, that they're independent. And the alternative is that there is an association or that there is a dependence between salary band and a particular, a particular individual's gender. You can see this is a quite a topical uh, question. Uh, it's really in relation to that, let's say, gender pay gap, and that females aren't don't seem to be progressing through the salary bands. Uh, 
what I mean by progressing through the salary bands, progressing through the salary bands in the same proportions as the males who progress through the salary bands. So this is Chick Tish's data. I'm really saying I've only got two males earning 100, uh, over 100,000 euros, whereas I have, I have 17 males. But it's hard to sort of visualize here because there's only 68, there's only 68 females, whereas there's 105 uh, males. So the question is, proportionately, are there, are there differences, if that makes sense? So to do that test, uh, I go to Analyze. Now, this isn't a goodness of fit test. This is a test of independence. And to find a test of independence, we go to descriptive statistics and cross tabs for cross tabulation. So I'm going to hit the cross tab and let me just reset this here. Uh, my rows in my table are representing the gender and my col columns are representing the salary band. Yeah? And let's say in relation to the cells, don't forget when we, when we manually undertake a, a chi-square test of independence, uh, what the chi-square test of independence does in the background is it compares the observed frequencies within cells against the expected frequencies. So I'm going to ask for the expected